Hi, I'm Eric Freund. I'm a senior engineer here at Alauda Aeronautics. I work on powertrains, airframes, and currently working on battery technology. Most of our design to date has been around minimising the weight in the containment structure and fire reduction. So should there be an accident or a mishap with the charge system, we can contain the system. Now that we've got that perfected and we're working on a modular battery system, we can start looking at different technology to put inside it. We're running a, a system which has two modules in every battery. This allows us to have redundancy in the system where we can run upper and lower motors and if a system goes down, we can still maintain that flyability to safely land the vehicle. Some of the biggest demands that people don't realise with the EV toll and all types of vertical lift aircraft is that there's an immense amount of power actually used in making that thrust and it's even more so in, in the race um, field. You find that the batteries have to be able to discharge at such a rate that they're delivering more power than a, a, a sports car easily and that kind of energy density is difficult to store in a small space so consequentially we find out that the batteries discharge very very quickly and that's one thing that we need to look at when we do these races is how we manage the, the pit stops and the battery changes because it's a trade-off between how many batteries we carry and how much energy is stored in those batteries for the flight. Uh, it's an interesting thing because unlike a, a fuel driven vehicle where you're throwing the weight out the back as you're driving off the batteries stay the same weight during the entire discharge cycle. Hi, my name is Henry Nicholas. I work for Aeroda Aeronautics and I'm in charge of the engineering activities uh, regarding aerostructures. When I was a kid, I was dreaming about uh, racing cars and, uh, and flying cars and everyone told me that uh, by the year 2000 there will be uh, flying cars all over the planet. So on the 1st of January 20, 2000 I was watching in the sky, unfortunately I didn't see any flying cars. And 2001 it was the same, I've seen the Euro arriving and uh, the old uh, European currency being done but no flying cars. At that time I was doing uh, racing cars and I was working in Formula 1 and enjoying a lot what I was doing. And then I moved to uh, working on the um, aeronautic business, uh, designing uh, aircraft and helicopter and manufacturing them, uh, everything being in composites. And uh, six months ago, uh, I decided to join uh, Eloda Aeronautics and the Airspeed uh, series to build the first flying racing car, which is a bit of a mix of what I've done in the past in racing cars and what I've done after in uh, flying vehicles. three flying machines that are going to race. So we've done a lot of activities on the aerostructure side, on the uh, system side, on the flight control uh, management system uh, to have this machine being reliable and uh, being fast. And we can't wait to see them uh, flying against each other in our first race. This is only a first step, that first race. We've got a lot of activities that we want to carry on in 2022 and in the next few weeks and few months. Uh, we obviously want to test a more powerful powertrain. We want to go faster. Uh, there are some aerodynamic activity that are, uh, we are doing at the moment uh, to make it also more efficient. We are also implementing a lot of uh, tools for the pilots to feel more confident and to push the machine to a, a faster speed. Uh, all these activities have been done by a very talented team here in Adelaide but also in the UK uh, and uh, the activities that we need to do in the next few months are going to help us building a product that we hope will be um, uh, flying in the next few months and will be faster and more reliable than the existing one.